hello audience. Once again, we are having to talk about cancel culture and the whole fallout of George Floyd's death because it won't stop affecting things going on in my country. So to get right into it, the Times came out with this article yesterday. University cancels racist David Hume. A tower honouring the 18th century thinker has been renamed over his support for slavery. Yes, to make a very quick moral statement on that, slavery was absolutely better than the alternative for the African captured tribesmen who would have just been murdered instead if they couldn't have been sold for a profit. And actually, the people who saved them in the end wasn't the Africans helping out each other. No, it was us basically forcing them to find alternative ways to make money, then selling them into slavery, given we ended that entire trade. But this was after David Hume, so that means that unfortunately, he has to go now because he's a racist or something, I don't know. So a giant of the Scottish Enlightenment has suffered the indignity of being cancelled by one of the country's most prestigious seats of learning hundreds of years after his death. David Hume, the philosopher, historian and economist, helped to define the critical thinking which underpins modern scientific thought through his scepticism over the existence of religious miracles. So it's not blasphemy laws actually getting him, or blasphemy in the religious sense, it's something else, probably supporting racism or something, I don't know. The David Hume Tower, which rises over the University of Edinburgh, has been renamed after concerns raised in the midst of the BLM protests. See what I mean? We, we get, what, two lots of protests in London and a few more around the country? All of a sudden, we have to change the name of every street, of every tower, of every landmark, because we're a racist country, apparently. An online petition raised in July claiming that Hume used racist epithets attracted a fewer than 2,000 signatures. Oh, my days. However, the university bowed to pressure yesterday, announcing that the tower will be now known as the 40 George Square. Oh my god, I, I, that's probably because of George Floyd as well. The university announced the move in a statement on the work of its Equality and Diversity Committee and its Race Equality and Anti-Racist Subcommittee. It said that its work had been energised since the death in the US of George Floyd and campaigning by the BLM movement. So there you go. Apparently they're naming the tower after a random criminal who died in the US now. It's amazing how quickly one can rise to sainthood because they happen to OD on police camera footage. While yes, the cop did have a knee on his neck, there was no evidence of strangulation or asphyxiation on his throat. So he is still an alleged murderer, the cop I mean. But, I mean, as soon as that court case is over, I can see a lot more riots, that's all I'm gonna say. And I don't think decisions like this will be reverted. I think we'll see George Floyd streets all over the world. I'm afraid this is how large the cult of leftism has got uh, all over the world. Now we have everyone thinking that Greta Thunberg, some saintly girl brought down from the heavens to save us from the dreadful CO2 emissions. We've got George Floyd who's telling us how all those in authority are racist and deserve well, to die, I guess. I don't know. That's seems to be what the riots are for. It's just all so tiresome. It is important that campuses, curricula and committees reflect both the university's contemporary and historical diversity and engage with its institutional legacy across the world, the statement said. For this reason, the university has taken the decision to rename, initially temporarily, until a full review is completed, one of the buildings in the central area campus. From the start of the new academic year, the David Hume Tower will be known as 40 George Square. It added, the interim decision has been taken because of the sensitivities around asking students to use a building named after the 18th century philosopher whose comments on matters of race, though not uncommon at the time, rightly caused distress today. It's, that's it. It offends people. That's all you need now. It offends me. Change this name. And if you happen to be following the correct cause in the name of it, then these weak and pathetic people bow to your every desire. Absolutely no one should have that power, let alone a group. And we're talking a group of less than 2,000 people who weren't even necessarily Edinburgh University alumni. But this is the strange world we live in. Well, now the article gets into exactly what David Hume said. So Felix Waldman, a former David Hume fellow at the university, discovered a previously unknown letter Hume wrote in 1766, encouraging his patron, Lord Hartford, to buy a plantation in Granada. 
Hume wrote to Victor Therese Chapentier, the French governor of Martinique, on behalf of his friend John Stuart, a wine merchant involved in the purchase of several plantations. He also lent Stuart £400 in early 1766. So because David Hume is writing a letter to some random French merchant on behalf of one of his friends who also happens to be a merchant, saying you should buy a plantation with a few slaves on, that now means that his entire legacy can now be destroyed, apparently. Because if you think they're stopping at that tower, you have another thing coming. They will try and burn everything about David Hume because of this. The indentures of one plantation owned by Stuart, held in the National Library of Jamaica, showed that by November 1767 it had 42 slaves. Oh, well, th this... This is all David Hume's fault. So then the Times article actually goes into a bit of a good profile on David Hume. So, philosopher has inspired generations. David Hume, who died in his native city of Edinburgh in 1776, was the most influential thinker of the Scottish Enlightenment. His pioneering essays on economics, politics and society inspired his friend Adam Smith and Adam Ferguson and horrified Scotland's rigid Presbyterian theologians. Hume's primary project was to develop a science of human nature, stripped of dogma and based on observable fact and careful argument. As a secularist, he argued that religion was a reflection of human psychology rather than key to understanding the universe. Immanuel Kant credited Hume as a thinker who had awakened him from his dogmatic slumbers. In 2009, Hume came out on top in a global poll of academics who were asked to name a dead thinker whom they most identified. Aristotle and Kant were second and third, while Socrates barely made it to the top 20. So there you go. David Hume, pretty big player when it comes to philosophy. One of the most influential thinkers when it comes to modern philosophy. Influenced a lot of other philosophers like Adam Smith and Immanuel Kant. But he writes one letter on behalf of someone else and he unwittingly becomes a racist. And that means that in the age of St. George Floyd, he now has to be cancelled and removed from history. Don't you just love the modern world? Thankfully, given that David Hume is such an influential character of history, there are thankfully quite a few academics who are pushing back on this nonsense. Renaming David Hume Tower is Craven, scholars tell Edinburgh University. Not only is it Craven, it is downright disrespectful. So, two leading academics have rounded on a Craven decision by Edinburgh University to reject one of Scotland's greatest thinkers with calls for Principal to hang his head in shame. The university's David Hume Tower, which celebrated the philosopher, historian and giant of the Scottish Enlightenment, will now be known as 40 George Square because Hume made racist statements 300 years ago. I mean, the Times itself has just pointed out how ridiculous this entire situation is. And as I keep saying, Britain, defend your statues, defend your figures of history, stop letting them win. Obviously, if you're in a position of power, if you're, you know, someone like me who has basically no power in these institutions, what can I do apart from make videos? And turn up if there are demonstrations to protect a statue, which I, there haven't actually been in my area and I've checked. So after the Times explains the situation from the last article we went through, it says... However, in a letter to the Times, Ian Gordon Brown, who was guardian of Hume's work as principal curator of manuscripts at the National Library of Scotland and the Royal Society of Edinburgh, suggested that the building be renamed the Snowflake Tower in Woke Square. <laughs> Dr. Brown, a fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh and editor of a new edition of Hume's autobiography published in 2014, accused the university authorities of virtue signalling. He added, much as I condemn racism and the history of slavery, I would nevertheless encourage all those who are disappointed by the university's craven collapse into political correctness and who are alarmed at the trend for judging the past by the virtue signalling of the present to join with me in referring to future in the snowflake tower in Woke Square. I mean, that's another thing you can do if you have no power. Just refuse to refer to it by its new name or do as this doctor says and call it by a completely different name that's basically insulting. Because I'm going to refuse to call this Tower 40 George Square if I ever need to refer to the tower again. I will refer to it by its proper title or do as the Doctor commanded and call it the Snowflake Tower in Woke Square. Dr Tom Devine, who is regarded as Scotland's greatest living historian, was also angered by the decision. David Hume was and is the greatest philosophical mind Scotland has ever produced, he said. His alma mater has now traduced him. The current principal of Edinburgh should hang his head in absolute shame. 
Sir Tom, who held the Sir William Fraser Chair of Scottish History until his retirement, added, If still employed by the university, I would have fought tooth and nail against this decision. In history, we teach our students not to indulge in the intellectual sin of anachristic judgment, i.e. never to impose the values of today on those of the past. And this is the type of shit that I've been trying to fight for, well, two years of YouTube now. We are constant, well, I say we, leftists are constantly trying to judge the past by their current sensibilities. And the problem is, is that their current sensibilities are a minority nowadays. The only reason that it seems to be everywhere is because the elites are intimidating everyone to comply or lose their income, lose their livelihood, lose their freedom in some cases. And the problem is, how does the little man fight that? This is how we get zeitgeists, and then we need answers on how to fight it. And the best I can do is hide behind a mask and give comments on it on my YouTube channel. At least while The Guardian isn't trying to shut me down. In Essays, Moral and Political, published in 1742, Hume wrote, There never was a civilised nation of any other complexion than white, nor even any individual eminent either in action or speculation. Six years later, he wrote that black people were naturally inferior to whites. Ooh, spicy boy David Hume. But if these have been known for quite some time, why does it take a letter that he writes on behalf of someone else to get this taken down? It's almost like they pick their targets as they fall in front of them. I also want to point out that these opinions of David Hume's were pretty common and the standard, uh, the zeitgeist, if you will, of the 18th century. Obviously, we have moved past these thinkings and know better now, but this is how the evolution of our morals and philosophy goes. We get things wrong, and that's fine, and we shouldn't punish people of the past for having opinions like this. It gains us nothing apart from self-satisfaction, and honestly, if that's the way you're getting that, you need psychological help. But I think you get the point. It appears that this is just bowing to the mob of people that they don't even know, while the people who have actually put work into Edinburgh Uni and even taken Hume's work forward, yeah, they're just being ignored, despite the fact they are completely right about David Hume and the attitudes we have today. But then we have stupid lefties who just want to take this on and completely tear down all of history, because guess what? All of history is pretty terrible. It is not Hans Sloane who has been erased from history, but his slaves. The founder of the British Museum witnessed and then became part of a system ruled by terror. It's right to remove him from his pedestal. This is the way they think. And I know this isn't David Hume, but it's a very similar subject, and it's the exact same logic that got the David Hume Tower renamed. And also, luckily I should be safe from The Guardian, because they only have a go at me when I use their videos, not their articles. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have a regular live stream. How do you erase a figure from the past and rewrite British history? That is not a question you should be asking. According to some, it is done by taking a bust or statue of the figure in question and carefully placing it inside a climate-controlled glass cabinet, that is then put on public display alongside artefacts explaining his work in a free-to-access national museum in the heart of the capital city. Oddly, this is not the form of erasure, favoured by Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, who tend to opt for alternative methods involving sledgehammers and explosives. Perhaps they have been going about it the wrong way. Yes, but the people of Bristol happen to agree with Al-Qaeda on how to remove a statue. I don't try and give me this bullshit of that he he's gonna be put in the same limelight in a glass case in a museum than when he's on a pedestal at the front, being thanked for literally making the museum even a thing. This is the problem. It doesn't matter how you take down the statue. It is the reasoning behind taking down the statue that we have a problem with. The reason you want to take it down is because you are applying modern day morals to people who would never have had a chance in hell of having the same morals as you, or morals that you find acceptable. This is how history works, please stop trying to change it and make it out it's worse than it is. And after pointing out that people are complaining about Sloane being moved to a cabinet, he says little of this in reality is much to do with Sloane or even with the British Museum, and we are not at the beginning of some Orwellian age of historical erasure, despite the fact that everyone can see that that is a bunch of bullshit. Rather, Britain is gradually coming to the end of a very different and highly effective process of historical erasure that has endured for centuries. What bothers critics of the museum is that the new display makes plain the fact that much of the wealth Sloan used to purchase his vast collection was derived from slavery. I mean, that's the last paragraph I'm going through on this Guardian article, because I go through it way too much of my time 
reading through Guardian articles anyway. If you want to see me react to them, I do a live stream every two weeks called Laughing at the Guardian. However, this is what most Guardian articles are like. They either try and redirect blame, so saying, oh no, you know, we're not erasing history. We're making history of slavery more apparent. Like, everyone knows that most rich people in the 18th century got their wealth from slavery. It was a goddamn third of the Atlantic Triangle. So don't give me that load of bollocks. Secondly, there is nothing wrong with thanking and putting a man on a pedestal for making one of the greatest museums in the world. And if your reasoning is that he owns slaves, well then guess what, son? That means we have to do that with absolutely every figure from before 1803. At least when it comes to Britain. Bloody hell, you want to go everywhere else? They did it for a bit longer than us. And finally, what the Guardian does is try and say, oh no, there's not really a problem here. You know, we're not taking him off a pedestal because we're putting him in a display case. It's, it's crazy. You're literally taking him out of the front of the museum and putting him in the back in some display case with other objects. The idea of him being on a pedestal is that he is the one person we thank for this because he gave back to Britain. And yes, he owns slaves. And yes, I understand slavery is wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, doesn't matter. If it's the zeitgeist of the time and the norm of the time, people are going to do it. And to stand up and be against it. I mean, hell, that took quite a few decades of British morality and Christian arguments from the sect of Clapham to finally get Britain to come around to the fact that slavery is wrong. And guess what? We went into debt to 2015 to end it. But I go on about these facts so much in my videos that I'm just bored of saying them. So there you go. And another problem I have with all this is just... It's not just erasing things of the past. The literature that we are seeing all over the bookstores now is ridiculous. I mean, just look at these. These are selected pictures I've taken off Twitter and have been sent personally. A place like WH Smith, Waterstones and places like that. I mean, one of these was a WH Smith in an airport. Another one was in a train station. One was a Waterstone somewhere in London, I think. This is everywhere. You've got why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. It's just a load of general bullshit about people wanking themselves off about being black. And for those wondering, I have done a video on why I'm no longer talking to white people about race, where I go through the whole book and explain why it's a bunch of bullshit. Link in description as usual. But anyway, that, that was my rant, and that is everything I have for you today. I, I, I am just so fed up with this, so before I rant again, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching, and as usual, until next time, goodbye.